have to lose twice to lose the championship. So that's one of our two teams that uh, made it this year. So, hey, let's get on our feet and let's honor the Lord this morning uh, before we get into the word. <clears throat> Come together in agreement, you know. Um, we know that uh, what comes out from this stage is not dependent so much on me as it is dependent upon us. And uh, there's a there's it's like grab it's like rain it, it it's just pulled from heaven by gravity. And uh, and so too I believe today for utterance. For Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for your word. We thank you. We stand on your word according to Second Timothy four seventeen that you stand next to me and give me your words to minister so that your message might be fully proclaimed. We give you honor and praise. We thank you that your word sets us free today and brings us direction in Jesus' name. Amen. Grab a chair. We're going to finish up a, uh, not a series, just a, 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 something the Lord was laid on my heart. Um, last week we, we did a kind of a, we stopped doing the series that we were in called Making a House a Home. We might pick that up next year sometime. Um, uh, there's a, there's a lot to a, a lot of things that are in our hearts right now uh, to share, and um, one of them being this this message on core core. And I want to just uh, define core real quick before. No, you know what? I'm going to read this real quick. This morning's message before I define that it's for two people. Now, two kinds of people, I should say. Um, last week when I started this message, I started it out by giving you a picture of, of a, a coach before a basketball team, and I was sitting in my, in my office getting ready for service, and, and I just saw the Lord saying some things to us. Um, and uh, the best way I could describe it, I tried to describe it to y'all, like a basketball team. And, and, um, and he said a lot of things. He said, you know, quit, quit running your mouth. Um, but he said, he said something to two people, groups, all, all the things that he said. He said, you know, uh, be quiet. He said, get your heads up. He said, uh, hey, you know, don't waste your time. You know, make most of it every time. He said, I, I have in my notes, I, I read those five things. I would say, encourage you to go back and listen to those five things. Because I, I, I said them like, I, he said them to me last week. But we're not going to take the time for that. But there was two kinds of people that he was talking to in that, it, really directly. He was talking to the whole team. But there was two types of people that this morning's message is for, and that is in the church, those that have their heads down and those that have their heads out. You understand what I'm saying? Those that have their heads down, those that are like, God, man, it just seems like the more I pray, the more hell breaks loose. And so, you know what? I, I don't even know what to do. Matter of fact, I just, the harder I try, the more I mess up. So you know what? Coach, take me out. So I'm, I want to talk to that set of people. I'm talking to the whole team this morning, but I'm going to talk to that set of people. But then I want to talk to this set of people, and that's those that don't even really know what's going on. I was talking with Pastor, uh, Pat at Baderos. He plays the congos up here and uh, the drums, or I don't know if they're congos, whatever, the red deals, the bongos, congos, whatever. <laughs> that might be. Dun, dun, dun. All right. All um, right. But he was talking about, uh, we were talking about what I was sharing. He said, you know, it just reminded me so much of a time when I was in high school and we were playing a game and we were doing real good. And, 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 but but, but I, think, I think he said he fouled out. And so he sat down on the bench and he goes to sit down and the guy comes in and he goes, so who did you have? And he's like, I got, you know, this guy, number 53 or whatever. And he's like, he starts playing and he doesn't, he starts playing zone when it was man to man. And the other team started just whooping up on him because he was so... He would, not only was he dismal, he was so disengaged in what was going on. And by the time he caught on to what was going on, game was over. Game was over. And let me just make this to say, we aren't too long before the game is over. And um, I, I, wanna, I, I didn't have this in my notes, but Matthew chapter 20, I had been doing a lot of studying on this this week. Um, early on in the week, I... I read this account, and you maybe have heard of this account. The, there's a parable that Jesus told about the parable of the ten virgins. And I'm not going to take time to teach on it this morning, but uh, the Bible says that there was ten virgins, and these, these virgins or servants, okay, virgins are those that, are, that are, are holy and pure, made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. This is what the picture of these ten virgins are. And, uh, and they came to, the, to, to, to know that the bridegroom was coming, and they got their lamps all ready, you know, they trimmed their wicks, and they're like, yeah, Jesus is coming back, woo! But it says, that there's something, that as I was looking at all this this, this week, um, it says that they all fell asleep. It's interesting. So, you know, we often talk about the five, you know, that had, they actually brought oil, 
and then there was five, and they were wise, but there was five that were foolish. And so even though they were asleep, they continued to put the word of God in them. Okay, that was what would sustain them. Okay, the um, Bible says the word of God is spirit. Okay, and, and the oil is a, sim, a symbolic of the Spirit of God. And so, yet they were full. Even though they were asleep, they, 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 had, they had enough of the Word of God before them. They, they were at least still going through the motions. But then there was the other five that completely fell asleep. But there was this other one that's not really represented here. And I thought it was really interesting. And so many times we just see the parable of the ten virgins, and, and I, was, I ended up kind of, you ever get into one of those video holes, you know, like on Facebook? Well, this was kind of like a word hole, you know, and what I mean by that is um, I, 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 was, I, 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 I clicked on this piece of this word, and I was like, oh man, that's so good. And then it, it led me to this verse, and then it led me over to here to this verse, and then it led me to here to this verse, and then it led me here to this verse. And then by the time I got over here, I couldn't even communicate all that I had seen in my heart. But I can tell you this. The parable of the ten virgins has a, it just reflects a lot of what you see in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Talking about the churches. And there was one church that never fell asleep. And you'll see here in Matthew 25, if you read the parable of the ten virgins, it says this, it says that there was a cry, there was a cry that came, ran out. I'm going to read this. It says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, all of them. All of the church fell asleep. And we, we, last week we read, uh, um, I read a prophecy uh, uh, about, about a sleeping giant of a church, and the church was asleep. But, but, um, but it says this, and all the church slept, all of them slumbered and slept. And at midnight, and I thought this was really interesting, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and go, uh, go you out to meet him. So at midnight, this is really interesting, at midnight there was a cry. It wasn't, it wasn't a trumpet, it was this word that said, Hey guys, Jesus is here, he's here, he's here. And in Revelation you see this, you see there was one church that didn't fall asleep, and that was the church of Philadelphia. Now, I, 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 I really was getting into this whole word thing. And how many of you know what Philadelphia is? It's love. One that loves their brother. And the one that loved their brother was still about. And you know what? The one that loved their brother could have left the tent sleeping. And so what you see is this is a type, and even like yet yeah, Jesus talking about what was coming, and, and, and you read Matthew chapter 24, here now he's in Matthew 25 talking about the same thing and about the kingdom of heaven and how the church is going to be asleep. That's what he said. And then here we even see, the, like we just, that's what he said, they all were asleep. But yet someone, someone wasn't asleep. Someone that was secure and, 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 and full of the love of God for their brethren. Or for their brothers, okay? We don't have to talk old King James, right? They were full of love for their brothers. They had, you know, and, and we, I believe now more than ever, the Lord is talking about this to his church. And so there, in, in, in Revelation, you see a bunch of different churches. And, and, and it, even though there's, um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different churches, there's one church. He was just talking to the conditions within the church, okay? And so this is what this, is the, this morning is about. It's so amazing, to me, the, even the, the song set, you know, we were singing the lion and the lamb and, and all that. And I've heard that song a hundred times. And, and I even said, yeah, I want to do that this weekend. And please, and we just learned it Thursday. And, but I, I, a lot of times I, I miss the words and songs. I don't know if it has to do with my hearing, not being super like sharp and like crisp. But like a lot of times the words just sound like this. Roaring in battle. You know, I don't know what, why that is. It's kind of like last night my wife was talking to me. We were driving down the road and she goes, she said something and I caught like two or three parts of it. And I'm like, huh? And I do this too often. I'm like, what? And then, and after a little bit, I'll be like, I'll just sit there and be like, you're going to have to like turn and like just flat out say it because I'm, I'm struggling to hear you. But the beginning of this song, uh, put up the words of the first uh, verse of that song. It talks about how he's coming. And I, that's what I'm here to tell you this morning. He's coming. And, um, and, and, and you know what he's coming for? He's coming for all. He's coming for the church. He's coming for, he's coming for the harvest. This is what he's coming for. And he needs, he needs somebody to make an announcement. 
And I don't know about you, but I want to be the one that, that, that says, hey, he's here, come on, come on. I, I want to be that. I want to be that. He says he's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. This is what we were talking about last, last week, that every knee will bow. We talked about the church and the church's role. And so so let, help me let's get caught up to speed here because I want, I want you to catch what, what I'm saying. I want your seat to be able to handle what I'm saying. Okay? All right, so here, let's, let's cruise through this. A core is a group of people associated together or acting under a common direction, a core. And I would say this, the church is a core of people operating under a common command. Not a direction, but a command. And Jesus is the commander. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the commander of the Lord's army. And you know, though he is depicted many times in a robe with a couple of sheep or whatever it might be, maybe we should have him as the five-star, eight-star, seven-star general on the wall. Because he's a commander. And there's fire in his eyes. And there's things, I mean, maybe that's what we should draw him in, in some kind of commanding get up. Because that's who he is. And so it says that we, we talked about this that we must not be a defeated church. We must not be a divided church. Okay? Ephesians 2 2 says this You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil and the commander of the powers of the unseen world. We talked about last week how, how there seems like there's this plan going on. Well, absolutely, there's this plan. There, God has a plan, and He has had it from the beginning, and Satan has a plan, and He's trying to work it out, and he's, He has to use people just like God has to use people. And so He says, You used to obey the devil and the commander of the powers of the unseen world, or one translation says, The powers of the air. There is a power of the air, and his name is Satan, and he is the God of this world, little g of this world. And he, his, his role is simply to just bring suggestions to your flesh. That's how he works. He'll bring suggestions. That's how he worked from the beginning. Suggestions to your flesh. And if he can get you to think on them and get you to desire them, what happens is you're now submitted to him, and you're under the authority of the author. That's what happens. So he wants to, this is how he works. He just works with a, a suggestion. And every time you see it, you'll see he's always appealing to your flesh. You know, you're a three-part being. You and I are three parts. We are a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body. But whoever controls the soul controls the destiny because we're eternal beings. But Satan speaks to our flesh, and God speaks to our spirit. But whoever can, this is why, and we're, we live in this world, but we're not to be of this world. Matter of fact, we've been, we've been translated from this world, the Bible says in Ephesians, and we've been raised up to sit together with Christ. And so though we're in this world, we are to be changed. The Bible says in Romans that we're to be transformed by the renewing of your, our mind. And I might be going fast, but i got a lot in me to go this morning. So we gotta we gotta trans be changed. We gotta change our mind. We gotta change. We're to change who we are. And though we we're born again, and what happens when we're born again? Our spirits made new, and we are sealed until the day of promise. Until Jesus is coming back, and I'm and I, I, that's where I'm going. That's where I got His name on me. I got His name, and that's where that's where I'm going. And I'd be re, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you this. In my study this week, and I, I, I'm supposed to say this, though I have the prodigal son's name, though I want you to see the prodigal son's story. I was thinking about this this week. That son had the name, but you still got to make sure you stay home. He's got the name, but you bet, I'll tell you this, he's coming back, but I, I, I want to be there when he comes back. I don't want to be knowing some of the truth and, and, and not know where I'm going to end up. I don't want to be like the foolish, the foolish ones when Jesus comes back the first time. Though I know, though I know, but I don't have the, I, I'm so far, in a sense, disconnected from him that in, I, I, don't, I, I may come the next one. I, that's not me. I, I don't know. I'm telling you, this is what I saw in, in the parable of the prodigal son. If, if, if the party was going on, and there was a big feast, but had he not come home, had he not been in the house, he would have missed it. Father would have still been looking, though. This is the love. Even the whole time. This is why there's 144,000. I know there's talking end time stuff, but I'm talking end time stuff because you need to know the time. This is why we're talking this. All right. So, so Satan has, he, 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 he's the commander of the air, and he, this is how he works. And because we've spent so much time here on this earth and we're just in this world, though we're not of this world, we have to, be, we have to transform our mind. 
by the word of God. That's what the Bible teaches. Yeah. So that's what we, we're responsible of that. So when we're born again, our spirit's made new, okay? Our flesh is going to, we're going to have a whole new body when we get to heaven. No sickness, no disease, no nothing. Y'all be like, man, that's pastor, right? I'll be like, hey, who's that? Oh, man, looking good. Y'all looking fine. That's what, you know, we'll look sharp. We'll look like we were supposed to look, you know, teeth all straight, you know, everything. No, like, funkiness, you know, even the hairs on your beard will lay right, you know. Okay. That's, that's some of the most annoying thing ever. Come on. You know, like, you ever start growing a beard, guys? This is for the guys. Girl, girls, too, maybe, sometimes. She's like, no. No, she's like, no. Okay. Well, when you start growing that beard, and, like, it starts just messing with you and, like, turning in, and then, like, you ne inevitably get these ones that, like, want to shoot into your mouth, you know, so you're like, you know what I mean, like they just grow sideways, you're like, golly, anyway, even in heaven, all right, let's keep going, so here's what happened, he's the God of this world, but you got to know this, in Colossians 2.15, that, that God disarmed him, it says this in Colossians 2.15 on the Amplified, when he disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, okay, that's the commander of the powers of the air, we saw in Ephesians 2, he disarmed armed them and made it open public example of them exhibiting uh, exhibiting them as captives in his triumph triumphal procession having triumphed triumphed over them through the cross so when jesus died on the cross he he, he made a he, he said see this I, I not only did i win but i got him with me and i'm dragging them around i'm showing i'm showing you that it wasn't just some hearsay i got him right here and he's under my feet and he's under your feet all right, so, and he tells us this, so, so now we know that he's defeated, we know that he was the God of this world, but we know that Jesus came and took his authority and, and made an open uh, spectacle and display of him, and he said, now it's up to you guys, and this is in Luke, he says, now guys, here's the, the kingdom of heaven is like this, it's like a, like a servant or like a master who had servants, and he delivered unto them talents, and he said, here's your talents, and he said, uh, this is John, uh, Luke 19, 13, and he says this, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And he said to them, occupy till I come. And it goes on to say in verse 14, because you got to occupy till I come because the citizens of this world hate me. Did you know that the world hates Jesus? Amen. And he hates what Jesus stands for? They'll, 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 let you, they'll let you embrace, a, and they'll embrace you if you embrace a form of godliness. And they'll embrace you, but you'll have to deny the power. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So and he said that he hates, he hates, don't be, don't be afraid. He, they hate you, but remember, he, they first hated me. That's what Jesus said. All right, let's keep on going. So he tells us to occupy. And what does it mean to occupy? When you look up this, this word occupy, it simply means this. It means to do business. Some of you, we got to do some business. Come on, you know what I mean? Let's do some business. Let's do some business against the enemy. You know, and I said this last week, church is not just about gathering the saints, it's about bombarding hell. Yeah, it's like, it, it, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Why? Because we're coming and we're plundering the gates of hell. Why? Because we are the church and we're going beyond these four walls to, to, to have people know Jesus. And the only reason they can know Jesus is because they see that we know him. Yeah. This is what we're called to do. Now, I, I, we'll get it, but hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll catch the, the, these people here in a moment. Because your purpose is greater than some game or some Facebook or some, some car or some house or some children. Amen. Your purpose in your children is to train them to be a part of what you're a part of. So he says, let me be clear. The state of this world, let me say this. The state of this world, the state of this nation is a product of the state of the church. And so we talked about last week how Jesus, what did he do? He, pray, he prayed for the church, right? He prayed for the church. I'm going to read this out, out of John 17. Because how many, we said this last week, when the church shines, and this is why you got to get your head up, because when the church shines, guess what? The world sees. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Because we are the light of the world, the city on a hill. And we're not to be hid. We're not to put a, a bushel over our light. We're not to be apologetic. We're to shine bright. We're not to salt people's eyes, but we're to salt their food. In other words, what they're eating in their day-to-day their -day life, they should know that you're there. There should be flavor on the job site that they know there's going to be something good when you're around because yeah. you're salty. Yeah. And everybody, they need salty. Yeah. All right, 
Let's keep on going. John 17, 9, it says this, I pray for them, but I do not pray for the world, but I pray for those you have given me. So we see Jesus, and I'm, I'm laying this out because I want to get to some spot today. But he says, I'm praying for them, but then he goes on to say in verse 20 through 22, he says, I do not pray for these alone, but I also for those who will believe in me through their word. Did you know the only way anyone's going to believe in Jesus is going to be through the word of God that's brought by you? How beautiful are the feet of them that bring the good news in Romans? Doesn't he say that? How beautiful are the feet of them? Man, I, need some, I want some beautiful feet. Even though they're all, they may look ugly to me, I, I, want, I want the angels to say, man, those are some good looking feet. Because he's about it. Say that with me. Say, I'm about it. I'm about it. This church is about it. Amen. So he says, that they believe in me through the word, that they, they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. And that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So there's something about your word, but there's also something about that togetherness. You see both those. See, I have blue and red. Blue means that's important. Red, Jesus said. All right. That's all important if Jesus said it's in red. So, but I love this. I love how Jesus does this, though. He prays for us. And then he leaves. But he sends us a helper. And he sends us letters. You know, this is what epistles are. Epistles or, or letters to the churches. And so we, we, we started last week a little bit in Ephesians, and we started looking in Ephesians, and I didn't get to wrap up where I wanted to finish up, but so I tried to figure out how could I slice and dice this down to where it's just, there you go. And so here, here it is. Ephesians 1, through 23 tells us this, and he put all things, all things, somebody say all. all, all things under his feet and gave him, which is Jesus, to be the head over all things to the church. So he put all things under his feet, Jesus. And now that Jesus has all things under his feet, he said, you know what? I'm going to make you the leader. I'm going to make you the commander of the church. I'm going to make you the one that has the plans and leads this church to victory. Because I'm coming back to get a victorious church. So he's, this is what he says. He said, I put all things under Jesus' feet, but now I'm putting him to be the head Verse 23, over his body, which is the church, okay? I'm putting Jesus to be the head, which is his body. The fullness of him, who's the fullness of, of, of Jesus? Who is the fullness of Jesus, according to the scripture right here? Put it up there. And the, uh, the fullness of him, we are, which is his body, the fullness of him. So let's just, and who is the fullness of Jesus? Who? Who's like the complete picture or image when you're like, that's, that's us. We are the fullness of Christ, and our job is to do what? To fill all in all. This is, this is what he's given you and I to do, to fill all in all. To fill all things with his power. This is why we're here. To fill all things with his power, with his wisdom, and with his glory. We're saying, we are saying that his fullness, or, or this fullness, with which Christ fills all things is the body of Christ, the church. The fullness that fills all in all, the fullness that displays God's glory, his power, every bit. The, the, the fullness to, to this world to change the state of this nation, the fullness, the, 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 the complete arrangement of this nation is not someone as in a political office, it, it's the church. It's the church being the church. It's the church understanding its authority. Let's keep on going. Ephesians chapter, so we're going to just go through, roll through Ephesians real quick, okay? I, I skipped a, a, quite a few verses in Ephesians that I could have brought up, but here's Ephesians 3, 8 through 10. He says, Paul says this, he says, although I'm the least, okay, I'm the least deserving of all of God's people, God, he or he graciously gave me and this is, he's talking, Paul's talking here, but he's talking to you and I. This is the same gift that God's given us. He graciously gave me and you the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen, let me tell you this, you were chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. Verse 10. God's purpose in all this is to use the church to display his wisdom or plan. How many of you know that takes his power 
the purpose of, of you and I being here is to explain and, and detail out God's goodness to the world. But not only just to the world, it's to, to all, but to fill all with the power of God and the goodness of God, and to fill them with all of God's plan, his many-sided wisdom. I want you to read this um, in verse 10, put it up there. It says, um, God's purpose is in all that was to... God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety. In its rich variety. That speaks of all. That speaks of an all-encompassing. That, that goes back to all in all. That, 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 that his wisdom in its rich variety. That, that encompasses this. That God's wisdom, God's plan includes that flavor. All 31 flavors, guys. All basking, all, that's what it includes. It includes every piece. It includes, it includes everyone every, and everything. All things. And it goes on to say, it's just so we make sure that we know we're talking about all things because there's other things other than just humans. There's angels. There's demons. There's all things. It says that we would, we would the church, that would be you and me, would display God's plan. You know what it means to display God's plan? That we're walking in some good stuff. Because I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The thoughts to give you hope. Thoughts to give you a future. Your eyes haven't seen him. Your ears haven't heard him. But he's revealing to us by his spirit the things that he has in store for us. This is what God. And so if it's the church to do what? To display his plan in its rich variety. I love this. It's to all. To all and to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. In other words, this. The plan of God all of a sudden just comes out to the devil and he's like, oh shoot. I don't, I don't really know how to counterattack this because, because, because of the variety. Because of its all-encompassing, one translation says. Because of its all-encompassing. Like the plan that the church just kind of, boom, laid out there and has on display, I don't really know how to attack that. Matter of fact, I can't. Because this plan, it goes on to say, it, it, was, it was from the beginning of the, of the, of the world. It's, you'll find it further on down, it, from the beginning of the world. Yeah. The beginning of all creation, God had this plan. And so Satan can't, can't attack that. And so I want to, um, but this is how he works. And this is what I want talk to talk, get to today. This is how he works. He works, and this is Ephesians 6.10, and we kind of touched on this last week. Ephesians 6.10, put it up there, please. It says, finally, my brethren, so we're still in the same chapter. He's still talking to the same people, talking to the same actual church. He says, finally, guys, here's what, here's what I need. I want you to be strong in the Lord. So be strong in this thing that God, that God has placed in you. This is why you need to know what God says about you and his promises. And Pastor Fred was up here just going over them this morning. This is what you have. And you need to be strong in what you have. Because it's not, what, what you have is not found in you. It's found in him. Okay, and so he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And this is what we're going to go into a series about this later at the end of uh, summer and the beginning of the school year. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand or to oppose. That word stand means to oppose. To oppose, to, to keep him, because Satan's he's, he's, he's working to try to, to mess with you. That you may be able to oppose or stand against the wiles or the methods of the devil. Did you know the devil has methods? He's got some wiles. He's got some methods. You know his methods? It, 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 I, I love this next, the next part of this verse because it kind of just display, it just shows what we're talking about. With, it says this, that you may be able to stand or oppose the wiles or the methods of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day, in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand. So keep opposing. But here's what he wants to make clear. Hey guys, it's not what you see. It's not what you see. It's not what you see. And, and this is where, this is, this is the problem, is we're looking at the scoreboard. And, and, and we, how many of you have ever done this on, in your faith? Like, you're like, I'm believing God for something. And I'm looking at the scoreboard, and I'm like, I guess God, I guess he's just like not alive anymore or something. Because, I mean, look at the score. 
and you lay down. And, 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 and you forgot about the, 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 the time when you shut the, the, the TV off and, and the, uh, we left an Arkansas foot, or ba- baseball game one time. And uh, it, it was, the score was like terrible, right? I mean, uh, it's actually still the biggest comeback of all of Arkansas history. I think they were down like nine runs in the bottom of the seventh. Huh? Is that right? I think they were down. Anyway, they come back, and, and it, was like, it was like 13 to, to 3 or something, or 13 to 4 or something like that. And uh, there's like an out or one or two outs. And we're like, let's get out of here. Let's beat this traffic, right? So we get on the road, and, and what happens? Boom! We turn on the radio, make sure that it's, you know, it's over. Because, you know, you just got to make sure. And Arkansas again does, you know, right? Well, not this time. There was something spectacular that happened. And this is how, uh, 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 you know, there's something that people talk about is not just, oh, yeah, yeah, they won, that was expected, but like this triumphant, like they were unstoppable. And they try, uh, anyway, let's keep on going. So, but this is how the, me- this is what the, me- this is the methods that Satan uses. He, what he tries to get you and I, our attention on, is simply what we see. You know, what we see, what we have, what we don't have. And this is where, I, I don't know about you, if you ever felt like you've been caught in like the washing machine of life, that it just, it's like you kind of get glimpses of what God's doing, but then it's all like, I wonder who's on Facebook. Oh, look at Pokemon. Oh, look at whatever it might be. It could be Pokemon. It could be Slitherio. It's a snake game, right? It's pretty cool. It could be anything. But he try, and his, eyes, his, his, his goal is simply to get your eyes on what you see. He, to bring suggestions about what you see about your marriage. Because then you begin to act according to that. So, and it's all about either, even the, the things that are distractions. These getting your eyes on what you see. Oh, look it. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Go chase this one. It's all about at least delaying you so that he can bring destruction to you. Just distracting you, keeping your eyes off of it. But guess what? God has called you and me to do something wonderful, to do something great, to do something that only the church can do, to to, to literally fulfill the reason why he created us, to to be the demonstration and the display of God's goodness right now. The Bible says in ages to come that it's for now. It's right now. And let me just keep on going. <clears throat> and so here, here's how he gets us. He gets us consumed with what we see. And there's two things I was talking about. It's either fear. You know, this is, um, fear is like one of the number one ways he works. You know, he'll just false evidence appearing real. You've all heard that. False evidence appearing real. No, it's real. No, look it, it's real. No, because you said this, and so in your marriage, you said this, and, and then you did this, and so that's why it was like this. Yeah, but that's not what I did. No, that's what you did. And so it's false evidence appearing real, and, and now you're afraid that what happened, and so now there's this division. False evidence appearing real. Uh, um, no, it's real. Hello, it's real. And we forget this idea that truth, the truth of God's word always trumps what we see and what's true. God's word is, 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 is always trumping it. But Satan will say, look at this. Yep. We watched this movie. Um, you've probably seen it before. It was called Thor. And there was this guy in this movie. And some of you are like, yeah, I don't watch movies. I'm a Christian. Well, so am I. And I don't watch bad movies either. <laughs> but I watched this movie. It was rated PG. Um, but it really was. And it was called Thor Dark of Ages or something like that. Dark Clouds or something. I don't know, remember what it was called. But there was this guy in there named Loki. He was the brother of Thor. But what he, what he was good at was deception. He was a dark, and, he, and, and the movie ended with him. He had died, but all of a sudden, here he is now on his father's throne. But his father had, we don't even know. I looked it up, and like, did his father die? How, how did this happen? I thought he died. I mean, you don't even know what he's doing because it was him, but it really wasn't him. It was just a hologram of him. It was him just... It posing as something else or someone else. And this is how Satan works. No, they, everyone thought that what was going on was real. 
And this is that, it's such a picture of Satan. I was like, oh my goodness, that is such a picture of the devil. He'll tell you you can trust him, but you can't trust him. And then when you do trust him because you see it and you think everything's right, and, and, and Thor, uh, his, his brother, I think his name Loki, was Lockheed, died right there. And Thor's crying over his brother because it's so real. He's like, oh, you know, he, he did it with honor. He did it with whatever. And all of a sudden at the end of the movie, it's like, no, he was, it was all just deception the whole time. And this is how Satan works. He gets, he'll, get with, he'll get with our fears, he'll get with what we see, and he starts working this way, and it, it, this is how he works. All I can say is this, we have to be more mindful of what we don't see than what we see. That's like the main message right here today. We've got to be more mindful of what we don't see than what we see. And so... That what will help us when we understand that, and we understand that this is how we will stand, we, will, we won't have to know what's on Facebook or CNN or Fox News or whatever. And I'm talking to the church that has their heads down because all they're seeing is like, dear God, I don't even know if I should even, what to even do. I mean, maybe I could just hit Trump like five more times or something. Or heck to Hillary and heck to Trump and just Jesus. Yeah, okay, but what is the hell? Like, you don't even know what to do. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you're just, you're just, you're just lost. And your head's down. And, and, and there's nothing. Let me say this. You know how you know when a team's beat? They stop talking. When the team stops talking, when, it, when, when you can't get the word of God to come out of your mouth anymore, especially with authority, you know, like, come on, guys, we can do it. Rally caps. <laughs> Rally caps. Yay. Oh, come on, guys. There's only two outs, and we're only down by 16, but we can do it, Ra. You're not even talking. And usually he gets you not talking way before because you, he gets you to look at something like Momentum. Well, the devil's got this going, and he's got this going, and he's got this going. Well, hey, let me tell you from the beginning of the world that God set some plan in motion, and you would order to display it. So somebody get up. That's what we have to do, because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And I need to start letting the word of God and the plan of God come about. And understand, like Paul said, that God gave me this gift, this grace, to make known. We don't make known Jack. All we talk about is what we see. That's garbage. The thoughts and the plans of God, are, they're not our ways. They're not this way. They're this way. They're higher. So we're going to have to start seeing and saying what he's saying. If we're going to start walking and being the display that God's called you and I. Otherwise, we can just be one of those guys that's asleep and hope that somebody wakes us. Because you will go to sleep if you're getting beat. If the game is no good, you'll shut down. When the, when the Super Bowl is going on and it's like this amazing, like, oh, whoa, look at this, look at this, look at this. People aren't like, yeah. no, they're like, ha, ha. and if and if you are falling asleep, guess what is happening? Oh, hey, did you see that? Oh, what did you see that? No, did you see that? Well, wake up, high five, chest bump over them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You can't stay asleep long. Yeah. Not when you're seeing what's good. Not when you're seeing what's his stuff that's, and your eyes haven't seen and your ears haven't hurt and neither does your heart. Get your head up and let something come out of your mouth because guess what? He's coming. He's coming. And I want to show you this 10-minute clip of, you remember Pastor Lynn? She did our prayer conference with Pastor Susan, a lady that, um, she was actually our pastor growing up. And I'll tell you what, a woman that's given her, her life to prayer and um, just a couple of weeks ago, she had this visitation, or what she would say, a visitation or a vision from the Lord. I want you to see this, and we're going to finish up.
by being the church today. Watch this. talking about the glories of the temple and how it looked and the gathering of the people and the power of God, the Lord. In the Old Testament, I was just reading with Micah. I was reading this one portion of scripture, I think it's three, and he's talking about the temple. He's talking about the glories of the temple and how it looked and the gathering of the people and the power of God and the presence of God on this temple and the light all over Jerusalem and it being one of the seven wonders, this temple of the world. But then Micah makes a switch and he comes with a warning. And he said, this temple can be destroyed. Just go read it for yourself. If this, if this, if this. And he speaks of the destruction of the first temple. And my God, I, the way the Lord showed this to me, it couldn't have been anybody but him because he knows me so well. And I'll just give you the vision shortly. The vision was, I was brought up over New York City, and I knew I was there because I've been there so many times. All my whole life, my family, I've always gone, I had a pilgrimage to New York. My father was in state government, and he required that we meet the most patriotic children that there was. We went every year to Washington, D.C. We saw the same sights every year. We went to the Capitol. We went to the White House. We went to Arlington Cemetery every year. Why do we have to do this every year, Dad? Because we are. Same thing with New York. Every year, we went to the Statue of Liberty. Every year. There she is. <laughs> and so I knew her well. I could see her. I was coming up and I noticed the George Washington Bridge on my left and I knew that the bridge crossed the Hudson River. So actually in my vision, I'm ahead of, or my dream, I'm ahead of myself. I'm not sure which it was. I was awakened at three and then I don't know if I went back to sleep and this was a dream or a night vision. I, I don't know but I could see her most clear. And I know from my father all of the things about her, everything that she symbolizes, that she herself is the gateway to freedom and liberty. She is the representation, the symbol given by France in 1886. I could give you the whole story. <laughs> and he would make us me and my sister, it was so hot in there. Can you imagine climbing up in her? And it's so hot, this spiral staircase. And it goes up to the crown. And in the crown, there are windows. So when you walk these stairways all the way up, no elevator, no elevator. You walk. And then you're looking out the crown, which he always told us. The crown is representative of her authority and her place to lead the world and to command. Uh, he would always talk to us about the torch, which was the symbol of democracy and freedom to every immigrant that it would ever come through this gateway. They were to look and this symbol was to define and to clarify, you have entered the gate of freedom you have entered the gateway of liberty, even on her foot. Do you know on her foot is a chain? But the chain is broken. That says every immigrant that would ever come to this world, to the new world, every immigrant that would ever come 
It's a speaking, that chain is speaking saying, your bondage is broken. Because you, now you have entered freedom. And I'm getting closer in my vision. You know, and all the time I'm thinking about my dad, not knowing that the Lord would use this symbolism for such a time as this for me. And suddenly as I'm coming over her, I'm very close to Liberty uh, Island there. And I, um, I notice to the right of her by the torch. She has a torch in her right hand. I notice there this vapor of a cloud. It was a cloud. It wasn't a fluffy, pretty cloud. It was a vapor cloud. And it was kind of waving. And it was in the shape of a skeleton. And his headdress was like that of a Middle Eastern woman, black. And it was hanging over this liberty and freedom, my gateway. It's hanging over that. And I'm like, what is it? Then it would blow these puffs of smoke out of it. And every time, this regalness, this statue, this relic, this standard that I have lived by my whole life, Whenever that cloud would blow that smoke, she would rock. She, she would reel, almost like fall back. And I'm like, what's wrong with her? And then suddenly, there was a hand that came. First the hand was small, smaller than a child's. Then next the hand began to grow. And it grew, and the hand grew until it was big and powerful. You know how you see that thing that's like a, like a fist? And you know that it means power. Or it's a, like a, you better not mess with me, kind of thing. I saw this hand, and in the hand was a cup, a shining cup, with a sword straight through it. And the handle of the sword had a crescent and a moon. And this hand is trying to force her to drink from it and commanding with its evil, devilish voice. The scripture in Jeremiah 25, where the prophet Jeremiah is trying to get or is at succeeding and getting this nation who is an enemy of Israel to drink judgment. I'm like, I dare you, you demon power from hell, trying to quote, quote scripture to her. Say, you have to drink the dregs of this. Punishment to your inhabitants. Oh. But then suddenly, I hear a sound from the other side of the torch. And it sounds like bees. I'm like, that couldn't be bees. That couldn't help now. No bee can help this. <laughs> but the bee sound gets stronger and stronger and stronger until I realize it is the voice of prayers. As it gets closer, as it gets closer, as it gets closer and closer, I knew by the sound they knew their authority. They had received the revelation of their authority in Christ Jesus. And they knew that every power and every principality sent was totally defeated. And that we are in the earth to enforce that defeat on every side in every place no matter what world power or what ism 
We, the body of Christ, we are the answer in Jesus. And they began to pray and they prayed and they prayed. Most interesting thing, using their authority and the angels would join them and they would holler. I guess this was the scripture. They would say, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the angels would look at each other and they would smile and they would say it back to them. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. And every time they did that, the hand would relinquish its hold and it would stop pushing that cup of judgment toward her, drink, pushing it. And she would stand tall again. And they kept pushing and they kept pushing her away or pushing the cup They were pushing the evil away from her. Thank God for the body of Christ. Thank God for the body of Christ. Until this hand began to vanish. I'm stuck on the other part. And the other part is this. The other part is about the glory and the door that is opening to us. And the Lord, I felt, was saying to me, you can have that or you can have this. Keep praying. Keep praying till you see the end of it. Keep praying till you see a devil worship out of America and every other kind of, every ism. Keep seeing till you get it out of here. Keep seeing, keep praying. This, this is, will be an everlasting assignment for me until the church is raptured. I believe that this will ignite people to pray in America because of the change. I'm telling you, we are stepping on change here. And it's going to be one way or the other. And it's going the way of the Lord, where his plans and his purposes, even his thoughts toward this nation of America, Hello. who no man made. Check, check. The thought- um, <clears throat> so I wanted to show you that. And um, I wanted to read, a, read something that the Lord was showing me. You know, she said, you, you have a choice. You can have this or you can have the other. And in just my studies this week and just laying on a couch, <laughs> um, I came across the scripture. I thought it was really interesting. And it says this. It says, um, oops, sorry. I don't want Siri. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Golly. That's hilarious. Okay, so this is in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 38. And we were talking about, um, we were talking about those that are wa- watching. We talked about the, the, the church of Philadelphia and kind of painted that picture and, and, um, and the church, you know, uh, needing someone to cry out. And the question is, when are you going to, how long does, that, does, it, does something need to be, wrap a nation? How big does the hand or the fist have to get before the bees will come? And so in, in looking to this parable of the ten virgins, I was looking through it and I was like looking at, you know, this watchman and there was somebody that cried out and they came and said, hey guys, look at Jesus is coming. Get your stuff. Let's go. And making it to Revelation, looking at all of that and just all of these things coming together. There was another account talking about a watchman or somebody that was watching. And, and um, one of the parallel translations would, said this. It said, um, you know, how there's different cross-references for verses. And it said, blessed, okay, blessed is the one that I find watching 
at my coming. This is found in Luke. But right above that, it says this. It says, and I thought this was really interesting. It says, even if, okay, listen to this. Even if he, the Lord, comes in the second or the third watch. Now, if you go back, remember it was about midnight? Okay, that's not the, that's not the second or the third watch. What is this if? What is this if? Now, just stick with me for a moment. What is this if? What is it if I come in the second or third watch, like the Lord coming in the second or third watch? It says, blessed is he that I find watching. What is the if? Well, I'm a child of Abraham. Am I not? I'm the heir of Abraham. It says in Galatians 3.13 3, uh, 3, that I'm, I'm his heir. And, I, and you know what? I'll let me just say this. Time is, I, 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 I so told the Lord, I'm going to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm going to cut it into a piece so that, that I can, you know, rightly divide it so you can get it and you can walk out and you can have what you needed and not too much. But time is, doesn't really matter if we don't get some of these things. Because your time won't, you won't want it. And because this is really what this, this whole series, this whole two thing, it's, it's just so a word from the Lord to the church. And he said, uh, but so we, so we are heirs of Abraham, okay? Um, uh, we're seed of Abraham. We're his children, okay? Uh, children of faith. Okay, the, so anyway, here's the deal. You remember Abraham? Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Who was there? Anybody? A lot of people? No, a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of people too. But Lot was there, okay? His nephew, right? Lot, Abraham's nephew. Lot, or Abraham loved Lot. He gave him the best choice of land. And the Lord blessed Abraham, even the more the greater, when he got the, the weaker or the worst choice of land, the less prime peace. But you remember how Abraham entered a conversation with God about that city, Abraham entered a conversation with God about that city. Here's where I'm saying this. We have the ability to enter the conversation with God about this nation. And we can, we can, we can let the darkness stay there, past the first watch, and we can go through hell. No, hell's going to be way worse. Let me just make that clear. We can go through a bunch of junk, and people's hearts will fail them because of fear, and we can let the light go out, and we can let the light go out. Ten virgins. We can do that. And it says, but if he should come, blessed is it, blessed is it those that he find, blessed are those that he finds watching. But even blessed are those if, and so he goes, goes into this if, like, like there's, there's like, it doesn't have to be this way. Like there's a conversation you and I can enter. The question is, will you enter it? Will we enter it? Am I going to enter a conversation or am I going to be so distracted by everything that I see that, you know what, I had this conversation one time and they said, I don't want to go to heaven because I, there's just so much to do. I mean, I want to go see this, and I want to hunt this, and I, 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 I mean, I, I'm not married yet. I just still have, I just want to have some more fun. I, I just, I don't want him to even come yet. And some of the church is like, got their heads down. The other ones are like this, and here's what they're saying. Second Peter. Beloved, this is now my second letter to you. Both of them are reminders. This is out of the Berean Study Bible translation. Both of them are reminders to stir you to wholesome thinking. So remember to think on good things. Okay? But recalling what was foretold by the holy prophets and the command of our Lord and Savior through your apostles, first of all, you must understand that in the last days, in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. I think we're there. Where is the promise of his coming? They will ask, ever since our fathers fell asleep, everything continues as it has from the beginning of creation. But they deliberately overlook the fact that long ago, God's word, uh, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earths were formed out of the water. So in other words, they overlook the fact, if God said it, it's coming to pass. 
Where's this at? It's in, I mean, didn't your mom and dad say Jesus was coming back? Didn't they say it was darker than they ever said? Didn't they say this? Didn't they say that? I want, you, I want to keep reading here. They deliberately look over the fact how the earth and, and, and the waters were formed, through which the world of that time perished in the flood. And by that same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, yet, yet to come. The Bible says that. He'll never flood the earth again. So that's a promise. You have a sheet in the sky all the time, a rainbow. But this earth is going to burn. Yeah. That's that promise is yet to come. So you forget about the, his word. He kept it, it, it reserved for fire. Kept, 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 kept back. Think of it like kept back for the day of judgment. Because it's not God's will that any should perish. He didn't want to ever, see how, he didn't, he, he, that's not his heart. Kept, he says. Let's see here. I kind of lost my spot. Kept, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. The day of the Lord. Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. So, don't forget about what God's word said. Don't forget how it came to pass. Don't forget this. Don't forget that. Don't forget all these things. Don't forget that. But, but I want you to remember this. Don't let this escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day, and the Lord is slow to fulfill his promise. As, the Lord is not slow, excuse me, to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness. But he is patient with us. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be dissolved in fire, and the earth and its works will not be found. Since everything will be dissolved in this way, what kind of people should we be? What kind of, like, in other words, now, okay, whoa, okay, yeah, it's coming. And a day is like a thousand years, and, and, and now if you could just look at the timeline of Christ, and, and you can look at Ma Matthew 24, and, and how it talks about all these things are going to be happening, and as in the days of Noah, so too will it be, it was when the Lord comes back, and, and you look at that, that we're like at the, we're like, we're, no, we're not, we're like at the seventh day, and when you look at the Bible, and what it talks about with the generation that sees Israel become a nation will not pass away, let me tell you, he's coming in the clouds. Let me tell you, let me tell you this. He can come on, he can come on the first watch. Amen. He can come on the second watch. Amen. And he could come on the third watch. Amen. But that's all up to us. That's what I see. That's what the Bible shows us. And what she saw in her heart, she saw she, that how long, how dark does it have to get to, for the light to be light? How dark? will have to get for us to stand up and realize that we, should, we can't be so distracted with everything we see and we got to give way more weight to eternal things than we do to natural things. Amen. It's got to start. The question is, when will it start with you? Amen. When will it start with you? Are we going to like a Facebook page and change our status to the flag of another nation only for a week to let it return back to the same way? Are we going to pour out our hearts for this nation and our men and women in blue only a week ago? How many prayers were offered on Monday that aren't offered on Sunday? Why? Just look at this. And when I saw that the tree was good, and when they saw, whew, this is what deception is all about. It's like he could envelop her and just completely surround her to where all she's just so in this virtual reality. When reality is, he's working behind the scenes, and God's looking for someone to work right now. And he's looking to see all men come to the knowledge of him. I don't think it has to go so dark and so bad for God to be seen. 
I have to believe that he's good enough that it can be bright, it can be light, and if we shine like he shines, if the goodness of God is on display and bodies are healed and just, the, just God is all over display, people run to him. It doesn't take it ha- destruction to have a nation turn to the Lord. It takes the church to say that God is our Lord. That's what it takes. It's not going to get dark enough to cause people to turn and remain. It's, got, it's the church being the church, being the church, being the church, saying, you know what? We're going to be the fullness of God in every place, in everywhere, because this nation, and I'm telling you, this nation was not a work of man. It was a work of God. And I'll tell you what, from this nation, we're reaching nations. And it's not going to be some cataclysmic event it's going to turn people's hearts to the Lord for more than a week or a month. It's the, truth. It's truth. It's the church. Yes. This is why Jesus said, I pray for the church. I pray for the church. Not that you would take them out of this world, but that they, would, that they would know me. That they would become one. That they, that they would demonstrate the same love. That's my prayer. That's God's prayer. That's, that's our prayer. I want to read this out of the Message Bible. And just the last verse. And we're going to pray. Romans chapter 13, 12 through 14 out of the Message. says, but make sure, this is, it's, it's actually on the awakened cups at the hilltop, um, which I give Taylor Workman a hard time because they, they trademark it. But I told them, I said, well, we'll just get royalties off that, right? And, Anyway, but on their cup it says, the night is about over, dawn is about to break. It's on their, if you go into Hilltop, it's up on their walls. Be up and awake about what God's doing, but let me read it. Romans 13, 12 through 14. But make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day obligations that you lose track of time and you doze off, oblivious to God, Hey, the night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting, finish, putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when, he first, when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute. This goes back to that very thing the Lord was talking to me about. We can't afford to waste a minute. We must not squander these precious daily hours in frivolity and indulgence in sleeping around and <clears throat> dissipation. In bickering and grabbing everything in sight, get out of bed, (sighs) get up, get dressed, don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute, dress yourselves in Christ, be up and about. That's what we're called to do, to be up and about. Guys, everywhere we go, and we talked about this last week, I am a member of the body of Christ. That tells me this, that where I go, he goes. The same spirit that rose Christ Jesus from the dead lives and dwells on the inside of me. When I show up anywhere, he's with me. There's nothing that I face. There's no calamity. There's no anything that God is not too big for. Because every time, if there's darkness and God's on the scene, let me tell you, it can't stay. As long as we're on the scene and not asleep. Let's stand. Thank you, Lord. I want to do something um, this morning before we pray for our nation. If we have any law enforcement in here, uh, I want to ask you to come down front. If you're serving our nation as, as a man in blue, or you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> if you're here this morning, if you're out there and you're keeping our security, don't worry, I got a few extra guys ready this morning. So you can come up here. We got your six. Thank you, Jesus, that he's got our back. And what we're going to do is we're going to just stretch our hands towards um, our law law enforcement. Todd, I know Todd's here. I don't know if the Strouds are here. Brother Bill, anybody else coming? We're going to lay hands on them this morning. We're going to pray over them. And, uh, you know, don't just check out yet. Don't check out yet. 
All right? Thank you, Lord. Let's just stretch our hands forward towards these two men. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just, as these two represent so many, right now together, we just apply the blood of Jesus over them. We say no weapon, say it with me, no weapon weapon. will formed against you you. will prosper. prosper. But every hand hand that rises against you in judgment judgment. will be shown to be in the wrong. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it's not coming near you. Father, we call them blessed. I thank you for the peace of God that passes our understanding to guard their hearts and their minds, but Father, their families and their children. And we declare, we say, peace be in Jesus' name. Peace be still to the storm. And we rebuke you, devil, you lying, foul spirit. Take your hands off the minds of those in this nation producing destruction. And Father, I thank you for your love wrapping them up like a lamb. Like, just love. Thank you that love never fails. But we call them blessed. We thank you that they're hidden in a secret place. As they serve this nation, you said, Lord, greater love has no man than though he lay a life down for his friend. And so, Father, I thank you because of that position that they stand to honor that we honor them and we thank you, you keep them and we loose angels round about them. You said that you've given angels to us. So we thank you that they're covered by angels. I thank you for wisdom for every police officer. I thank you that they hear your voice and as strangers they don't follow. Thank you that you said that you'll be looking to the right or to the left, but there'll be a voice that's crying from behind, a still small voice, and it'll say, no, this is the way, walk in it. And so we thank you that their feet, their steps are ordered of the Lord. Thank you they don't stumble, they don't dash their foot even against the stone. And I thank you that this is a testimony of your goodness. As we see, as, as we, the church, pray, and he's our authority over the enemy. I thank you for light on every enemy, every enemy attack. Light in the name of Jesus, foiled, dissolved, brought to nothing. And we say this, we say this nation... With this nation, this nation's God is the Lord. Say it with me. Say, this nation, nation. God God is the Lord. Lord. Father, we lift up this nation to you. We lift up this nation as a congregation, as the body of Christ. We lift it up to you today. We say, we will follow your voice and as strangers we will not follow. Right now we lift up our president. We lift up every leader. We thank you that for visitations straight from you. Thank you for words just straight from you. I thank you. You said that the heart of a king is in your hand, in your palm, and, and, and you can make it go whichever way you desire. Father, we thank you for, you said that the prayers of the righteous make tremendous power available. So we thank you for strength and power and help for our leaders. But not just in the political realm. I'm talking about the leaders. I'm talking about the church. Because if you're in Christ, you're a leader. You're ahead. You're you're above and not beneath. So I say strength be in Jesus' name. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So I thank you that we become who you created us to be. That for a revelation of who you've created us to be, we are the righteous. We are bold because we're righteous, but we also are filled with love. Father, I thank you for your love that's in our, shed abroad in our hearts. That it moves us. That just as you were moved with compassion when you saw hurt, I thank you that we're moved and, and when we go, we have exactly what you are 
on the scene. Every word. Father, I thank you for that. Rise up. Can somebody say that? Rise up. Speak to the church. Jesus prayed for the church. We say rise up, church. Fathers, rise up in your homes. Fathers, you're able. You are well able to lead your family. No, I don't know. No, I always fail. No, no, you are able. You are able. You are able. You are able to lead your families. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you for wives that pray for their husbands. <sighs> Thank you, Father, for family. This restoring the family, restoring the church. And Lord, I, I ask that we just can't sleep at night. Because we're aware. And you understand what I mean by that, Father. Not that we can't sleep. But that our rest would only be found when we know we're being watchful. Not with our natural self. But in our hearts. And we thank you, Lord. You said that you gave us your spirit. Your Holy Spirit. Because so, when we don't know how to pray as we ought... You could pray through us. You could pray through us through an unknown tongue. This is what you said. And Lord, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to pray. I just know that I have to pray. I know that we must pray. I know that I can pray your word, but Father, I know that there's plans and things that you desire. And so we just ask you even right now, as we come before you and as we come before you in our own time, we ask you, Lord, grant us prayer for this nation. Grant us prayer for your plans. So we thank you right now for prayer for your plans. And we just tell you we are yours. We yield ourselves to you. We are not our own. We are yours. I'll pray. I'll pray. I said, I'll pray. I'll pray. All right, half of us will. That's a bold statement. But I'll pray. Will you? Will you pray? Will you pray? Don't tell me, tell him. Father, I'll pray. You have my ears. You have my ears. And I'll pray for this nation, for your plans, for your church. We are the army of the Lord. We are the army of the Lord. Amen. And we got one that's fighting for us. We have one that's standing with us and bringing about victory bringing about settling and calming every fear. We're going to close. Just Somebody start that, this, that rest of that song. And uh, we're going to finish singing just the chorus of this song this morning. And be reminded this. Get your head up. I am telling you what. This is, there's nothing more exciting than right now. And somebody just needs to start going. Because there's a buzz going on. And it's happening in the kingdom of God. And what's happening? I don't know. Something's happening. Something's stirring. It's like there's, it's like they're chasing, something's chasing me. It's getting me out of bed. It's waking me up. Oh, what was that? I don't know, but it's this holy hunger. And I'm, I, 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 let's, so, who is this guy up here? I'm one that I'm just giving you a message. Because we got to wake up. Because God has great plans for you. And he wants to use these hands to heal the sick and to set the captive free and that mouth to tell somebody that it's your year right now. This is the day you can be set free right now. Can I pray for you? Can I do something? He's looking, the Holy Spirit's looking for a place to rest. Whew. Will you let him? Amen. Thank you, Jesus.